first thing that we can notice here is that we have a new landing zone for the sundial. And uh, talk to me a little bit about uh, the inspirations and the design motivations that went into breathing some new life into Mercury. And Mercury, like, um, we had this really good opportunity from narrative to like really clash all these different timelines. You got like past, you got present, you got future. And like as artists, like we wanted to like see all of these assets again. So like you know, we just like figure out how to make this like as epic and as beautiful as possible. And then like suddenly we had the idea like, why don't we just put all of them all together? <laughs> and it was daunting. It was really scary because like there's a lot of technical challenges. We had to like go around with like lighting. We had to go around the world art and just like it over and over again to like make sure they actually got it all working with these giant time walls and everything. Um, but in the end, like you know, uh, it was worth it. Like I'm really proud of the work we were able to do. So we're going to be uh, fighting our way up this slope here. Yeah. Uh, Matt, the sundial is sort of emerging in the distance. Uh, this is Osiris's device that he can use to sort of control the corridors of time, all mm -hmm. the alternate realities. Uh, what were some of the themes and what were some of the different motivations that we embraced as we created this new action for the player? Once we, uh, once we learned where we were going on the narrative front, um, Jonto, I'm so sorry. Uh, but it was obviously, you know, time cops stopping time crimes. <laughs> time cops <laughs> stopping yeah. time crimes. Um, and yeah, and you can see players here, they just engaged with one of our new uh, Cabal champions. Mm -hmm. All right, and so here is this enormous device. Uh, Thanks. What were some of the different inspirations for creating this new structure? It's pretty daunting. So for Sundial, like, um, we had to make a, this crazy time machine. Like, it's super dangerous, you know, like, it's trying to borrow a lot from this, like, this Vex tech, and then, like, uh, Osiris, you know, this mar mystical, arcane person's like, I got an idea, and he's built this, this crazy thing. So, like, we had to mix, like, a lot of these structures of, like, um, really cool visual effects language that we have for Vex, all the grids and stuff, and then try to immerse, like, some of the uh, really, like, instrumental, like, technical stuff that Osiris has, you know, which is, like, more inspired from the like, 18th century, like, uh, nautical instruments and stuff. And then, like, we just built it, and, like, you know, it, it looks great. I love it. So like we, um, like we have set up in other activities, that was a totem they just interacted with and that started the encounter. And it looks like they're in the, uh, the future mm -hmm. encounter here. I love this one. Yeah. So like they the, step through an aperture into a different alternate reality, into a different timeline, um, and... This is what could come to pass. Pardon me? This is what could come to pass. What could come to yeah. pass if we, are, if we are not victorious. And when they activate this activity and they step through that window, um, they're not entirely certain what they're going to get. Like, this can be different combinations of timelines. It's going to be different every time they access the activity, yeah? Yes, and the, uh, the activity bosses will evolve. They will, um, week to week, they'll roll out a new one. And there's some surprises I really wish I could talk about, but I really wish I could talk about, <laughs> but I'm super excited for players to find out what it is. You know, as, as the season uh, as the season rolls on, and to your point, yeah, week over week there will be different bosses for them to face at the end of this activity. Mm -hmm. uh, our enemies have some tricks up their sleeves that will be revealed and understood over time. So your first experience with the sundial will certainly not be like your last experience with the sundial, and right. it, it'll be a you know, it'll be a varied experience. So and the uh, the activity can't you will always complete it. It doesn't matter who you match make with them. So if, if if players uh, find themselves with you, they'll still be able to complete the, especially UD, they'll still be able to complete the activity. What, what, Whoa. what? Yeah. <laughs> Shade. Um, especially, uh, so yeah, the, uh, the whole, the whole, one of the, 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 the goals for when we, when we set this up is, it's not a traditional horde mode. There are, uh, there are mechanics in here, mm -hmm. and you'll find that there's a lot of different strategies you can, you can incorporate in order to get through the activity and earn your rewards as fast as possible. Yeah, okay. And when hard mode comes out, uh, <laughs> you're gonna want to bring some friends that have, you know, that, that have uh, leveled up their artifact and gotten better okay. mods to be able to use against so the So point of order, uh, the Sundial is a six-player match-made activity. Correct. I can bring a pre-made six-player fire team if I want. Uh -huh. uh, obviously a team that can communicate with each other and coordinate with each other can complete this activity more efficiently, more quickly, get to that loot at the end. But in terms of hard mode, that does require a pre-made fire team. Yes. Okay. You're gonna just want to set those expectations <laughs> yeah. appro it's, appropriately it's for our community. Uh, so we got some some big bad bosses here. I think players are gonna really enjoy the new champions. One of the big challenges you have to figure out for this particular encounter is that like 
uh, we have to like be able to throw this ball that like, creates this giant laser and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad we got that in there. Uh, but like one of the difficulties is that you're looking at this really bright sky box, and we had to make a laser like yeah. be brighter than the sun <laughs> when you're on Mercury, and that was like. That was a challenge. I'm glad we got yeah. it working, but like, my gosh, we, we had to iterate a lot on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, talk to me about what the players are doing right now. They're picking up these charges. How exactly are they using these to uh, overcome the, the tactical so conditions here? So in this here? possible future, the Cabal have won. They have they've learned to potentially weaponize the light, and uh, they have all their ships just in orbit, you know, and... Uh, you're basically, you know, thematically, you're just basically saying, uh, stop hitting yourself. <laughs> you're, throwing, you're, throwing, you're throwing their kind of beacons. He's like, yeah, when, I remember when we were playing production, and I went up to Dante, I'm like, can we get a line that says, idiots, turn off the laser! <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's, 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 it just cracked me up, but I don't, yeah. I don't think we got it. There, uh, might, there might be a random chance, guys. I don't know, but it was it, it entertaining, <laughs> really. I remember in production, like when you first came up to me, like, hey, you know, we got this prototype working. I saw it, I was like, my gosh, how are we going to pull this off? <laughs> I'm going to blow up the whole goddamn world with this thing. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the power of fantasy here. The sundial itself, uh, it looks like a very dangerous thing. It looks like the type of thing that your mother would tell you not to play on. And here we're sending six people up on that thing to, to play with time. What were some of the different discoveries that you make along the way through playtest with the sundial specifically? Make friends. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it was actually it was, it was kind of humbling and, and, and just kind of a, it was a great like exercise in uh, and just user experience because you you spend all this time building encounters, building mechanics, and and, and tweaking things, iterating, and the the some of the most fun that we had in, in, in playtests and we were noticing is just, is players just like killing themselves. They really really just like to to, to to entertain themselves by just being murdered over and over and over again. So the sundial. It probably uh, has some design flaws. Well, Cyrus, you know, he was just kind of... a feature. Yeah, it's a feature. It's just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there they go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And some timelines they die, and some timelines they yeah. make it, you know? Yeah. You yeah. can't control time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we encourage you all to be very careful uh, as you play on the sundial. Uh, that's the end of the first encounter, and uh, there are several more encounters that would lead to the final boss. Yep. We will unveil different final bosses week over week, and... Uh, that's as far as we're going to go with all this today. Go with all this today.